Welcome back to another episode of WJAG TV. In this week's episode, we take a drive downtown to UGA to have a talk with recent Cedar graduates, take a look at how student teachers maneuver through the classroom, learn how to angle our cameras from Mr. Bosby, and fill our stomachs up at the Mifflin House. My name is Lilia Nile. And my name is Ansley Gunnerman. And, and this, this is, is WJAG, WJAG TV with, with your school news. <laughs> Stephanie Mifflin and her family started a Peruvian restaurant from their home, taking pride in cooking in the most authentic and traditional way they know how. They eventually had their business shut down for legal reasons and moved to another location in Homewood Hills. Dominic Bielli visited Mifflin House and here's a taste of their delicious family food. On the west side of Athens, located in Homewood Hills, is the newly added Peruvian restaurant Mifflin House. Peruvian food has been a part of the Mifflin family's life for decades, and opening a restaurant was a way for them to showcase their home country's cuisine. Well, at this point, we're just, you know, in the beginning, we're just starting, so right now we are very focused on what we're doing. Having a business, a restaurant business, is very challenging, uh, but, um, you know, besides to be on, um, um, a business and a way to get money, you know, to make money. It's a, it's, we have in our shoulders the responsibility of, you know, uh, show the Peruvian gastronomy. So it's something that we are very proud of. We have to do it like the right way. Peru is our national home and like, um, we always loved the food there and it's like, it's different from most foods around the world in its own way and I feel like everyone should like love it. Since I was little we would always make Peruvian food so that's what I'm like used to yeah. so like they're very serious about like the little things they add on it mm -hmm. and like make it very pretty. I've learned to cook a lot more. Um, there's a lot more plates that I can cook now that I couldn't cook before. Um, I've gotten more creativity and like I've gotten more passion for cooking than I used to have before and I've really liked it a lot. Things hadn't always been so good for the Mifflins. Prior to owning the location in Homewood Hills, the restaurant was run on a smaller scale out of their own home until the law got involved. Someone had snitched on us. Someone took pictures of like everything that was going on at the house and they reported it to the police. So they came to the house and they pretty much gave my dad like a bunch of tickets. And he said he wanted to keep going with the restaurant so my dad just went on the market, I guess, looking for a restaurant. So that's what basically we were living off of. And like we were, it was kind of like a jump start to like get us like professionally stable. It was very frustrating, but at the same time we were kind of prepared for that moment since we, you know, we were doing something not completely legal. Now that Mifflin House is a thriving licensed business, feel free to go enjoy the best and only Peruvian restaurant in Athens. I think we're the only Peruvian restaurant in Athens. I think Calientitos, which serves Peruvian food, but they have a, a bunch of other um, countries too. Word of mouth is one of the uh, best advertising, and you know, it, it would be great if that every single um, Athens neighbor could, you know, try our Peruvian gastronomy. Spread the word and check out Mifflin House. This has been Dominic Gilly for WJG TV, signing off. Pace Barkdahl took a road trip down to UGA to visit some of Cedar's recent graduates and see how they transitioned from high school to college. Now to Pace with the day in the life of a UGA student. Last spring, over 5,000 students were admitted into UGA. Adjusting to college from high school can be a bit of a problem, but these Jaguars have already become Bulldogs. Today we have Roro Jamul, Jake Gunnerman, and Bennett Cochran, all from Cedar Shoals, here to give you guys advice, tips, and what college is really like. At first, honestly, I wasn't excited. Like, I wasn't that excited about college. Not that I was, like, scared about it or anything. It's just, 
it's school, you know what I mean? When I was in high school, I thought that like all the college kids were super, I guess like preppy and that they were all uh, spoiled and like I guess brats. But then once I got here and when I've been talking to everybody, they're all super nice once you start to talk to them and they just weren't at all what I thought that they would be like. I guess the biggest difference between being in high school and being in college is the independence. No one's watching, you know what I'm saying? No one cares if you turn in your assignments or not. That's on you. You either do your work or you don't. You go to class, you get your stuff done, you do what you want. It's There's just a lot more freedoms. Living on campus at college versus at home with your parents leads to a different lifestyle and daily routine. So I wake up at, at like 7 and I get ready for my 8 a.m. class. So I do that until about 9, and then my next class is at 10.30, so I eat breakfast between those two classes, and then my second class of the day ends about 11, so then after 11, my day is free, I can do whatever I want. I get up a little bit before class, I sometimes eat breakfast, I sometimes don't. I go, I come back, get whatever studying I need done, which sometimes is a lot, sometimes isn't, and most days I go to band practice after, and I just come home and relax. My classes are different. Uh, my math class only has 19 people and then I have an anthropology class with 300 people. So some classes you'll talk to your neighbors next to you and some it's just too many people to even talk to. All of my classes are flipped classes and what that means is you do all like the learning, the studying at home and then when you get to class that's when y'all like work on problems like figure out what you don't know what you're actually struggling with. I've got two big classes one of them my mythology course is a like lecture heavy class and it's about 150 people. Uh, I've got a chem class though that's like the flipped classroom so we do practice problems all class that's like 200 people. However, classes aren't the only thing that's different in college life. UG as a whole is basically like its own city. It's like a different city within Athens so even though like I'm 15 minutes away I don't even feel like I'm in the same city you know what I mean? There's so many people in UGA, it's hard to know a lot of people, but I would say I the community in my dorm is similar to how the community at Cedar was. My favorite part about college is just the freedom and that I can do whatever I want. I'm not really on like a set routine like how uh, high school was. After my classes, I'm just able to do whatever I want. Don't think you can't go somewhere like, like a big university or somewhere that's going to be expensive just because of that. Like I said, I thought I was going to end up in debt. Like I thought I was going to have to take out loans. Like I was really worried about it. My advice for high schoolers to so just be to stick to doing your work and just know what you want to do and stick to your plan. It's just it's a good experience that everybody should have just going living in a dorm eating college food it's just something that everybody needs to do. For WJAG TV this has been Pace Park though. Seniors I hope those tips will help you through your journey through graduation. UGA students learn how to teach in a classroom but they don't get the full experience until they're actually in the classroom with students. Here's Dennis Maganda with the inside scoop on student teachers at Cedar. All around Cedar, there's different teachers with different experience levels and when you sit in a class with a new teacher, you always think about how much work you have to put into the lesson, but you never really wonder what kind of work goes on behind the actual outline of the class and what role that student teacher actually plays in it. I think I'm sh it would be overwhelming the amount of work that teaching is. Being a student teacher, I'm learning a lot of things that you just don't think about, like how to be efficient with grading exams. You don't necessarily think about that as a student taking classes. You're just learning about different teaching theories, but you don't realize things like you can improve the speed of grading by grading all the first pages, all the second pages, and so forth. Yeah, I think the Ed TPA program is really tough, and the process of becoming a teacher is really hard. Um, we, you know, pretty much during every planning period, we're talking about their lesson plans and tweaking them and trying to make them better after every lesson. You know, we're talking about well, what went well in that lesson, what didn't go well in that lesson, how can I make it better the next time I teach it. Um, so all that time that's going into preparing those lessons for them, I don't think students realize. Um, and then also the time uh, that we spend grading. You know, if you have 100 kids and you spend five minutes a week grading each kid, that's 500 minutes, which is what, a little over eight hours. While student teachers are still regularly involved at Cedar, they also have a lot of rigorous work they have to work on in college in order to make sure they're able to apply what they learn very well. They start out, they'll do field experiences. So we do our content classes, so all of our 
really rigorous math classes, and then we also do our education classes, our, our EMAT classes. At UGA, it's, it's, you get a lecture. Here at Cedar, I feel like you get a lecture, but you have more hands-on activities too, especially just like doing different things. But I feel like in the college levels, it's more just like one style of teaching, which is usually lecture-based. So our first semester, we have experience working with students individually. Second semester, we have experience working with students in small groups. And third semester, you know, it's a little bit more. And now we're actually able to be leading classes. And third semester we do lead classes, um, but not fully. And now we're just student teachers. We're, we're like regular teachers, but not. So early on in their thing, they'll just go visit a class maybe for a period or two, not spend a whole lot of time there. Then they do a semester of practicum where they spend, I think it's two periods. Um, all semester long they come like maybe two or three times a week and then there's a two or three week period where they are there all the time and then they teach their first independent lesson and then the following semester they would do their student teaching where they would be actively involved from the beginning and then at some point they would be primarily responsible for some of those lessons and then they can teach them usually the next semester on their own. Student teachers and experienced teachers alike both play a significant role in making the classroom as productive as it can be. I think that having that guidance on how to become an effective and a great teacher is good to have when you have a student teacher because if I didn't have, for example, if I didn't have my boss to be around me when I start a new job, I'd mess up and I'd end up getting fired. Like when I collaboratively plan with my partner and Dr. Morgan, I feel like we bring a lot of different things to the table. Obviously, Dr. Morgan, she brings the experience. She knows what's going on and like what what to be looking for. It kind of scares me thinking that I'm going to go into a classroom and I'm going to teach this lesson and I might fail at this lesson. But none of the students treat me like I failed at a lesson if I make a mistake. Or like I try to show them that, you know, it's it's okay to make mistakes on your math. I make mistakes on my math too. But the students are so kind and forgiving and they've been so fun to be around. Be able to incorporate as much as I've learned during my years in college, but also I want to be as productive and help the students as much as I can. And that's what the number one priority is at the end of the day. You want your students to be able to understand the material, but also have that relationship with them where they know that I care about you and where I want to help you as much as I can and not just I'm here to get a paycheck and leave. This has been Dennis Magondo with WJAG TV News signing off. You got to love our student teachers. Michael Bobsby has been teaching a film class at the Athens Community Career Academy and has just been given the opportunity to teach one at Cedar and Central as well. This is the first year that the intro to film class is being offered and here is Ethan Rice and Camry Branch with the inside story. Lights, camera, action. Students may have noticed more cameras on campus this year. That's because the film class formerly offered only at Athens Community Career Academy was made available for one period at both Cedar Shoals and Clark Central. This year they've given me the opportunity to actually teach at three different schools. Career Academy is still the home school, um, Cedar and Central. I would say right now because this is my first year doing this and we're probably going to need to tweak some things. No, there was no film curriculum at either school up until now. And the reason that they're, I want to say, experimenting with uh, Film One is to broaden my, um, my, my classes. If we can get students in both schools to go to Film One, then it's going to trickle down to Film Two, Film Three. And by Career Academy being the home school, that's kind of where, where the studio, everything is set up. Uh, the class covers uh, film angles, how to edit using certain programs, how to use a green screen, how to properly set up light kits, and script writing as well. So the class, there's film one, two, and three. In the film one, you just do the basics. It's like learning the camera angles, learning uh, what's what, the vocab of film. Film two, you start more on the project aspect of it all, kind of taking the knowledge from film one and putting it into practice into film two. The class offers students new ways to connect with the community. Be doing some stuff with the district. We're going to be doing some projects for them. We're possibly doing some projects for the government in this class in particular, only film three. 
and any others that have seeked out our specific help are able to check us out and ask for our services. This is Ethan Rice and Cameron Branch signing off. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> and now <Nata> sports! <laughs>